uh, good afternoon, good morning to those who are listening um, from outside of India and good evening. We're just welcoming the evening here in India. Um, it is my privilege to be in conversation with uh, two amazing, brilliant artists, Akram Khan and Mavin Khu. Um, we're just going to wait for about 20 seconds because Facebook has just notified people that we're going live. So we will just wait for about 20 seconds and then I will begin my introduction. All right. Um, very warm welcome to you, um, Akram Khan, and to Maven Koo. Thank you so much. Um, I thought I'd begin this, um, you know, conversation with a very powerful quote that I read this morning. It's by Maxim Legacy, and it says, "Bring your humanity to art. Bring your art to humanity." For time immemorial, the arts and humanity have shared with each other an in inextricable connection. The symbiotic nature of that relationship has had the power to transform and to heal. And then a pandemic comes by and forces us to wake up suddenly, startlingly, to all the inequalities that exist in our society, forces us to look a little beyond the world that we inhabit and at every single person who has a role, small or big, and who contributes to the ecosystem at large. Even as we grapple with the aftermath of the second wave, we need to recognize the further nexus that large crises like these unfurl, widening the divide between the haves and the have nots, the mainstream and the marginalized, the popular and the folk, the urban and the rural. What can we do? Become aware, be sensitive, read a little more, look around beyond the cozy comfort of our lives and when initiatives like trespassing humanity arrive literally on our devices without us having to do anything at all, we can take a moment off to acknowledge the work of a handful of artists who are doing their bit and become part of a larger movement that is committed to shrink the divide a little by little, making the cause of humanity one of our own. Trespassing Humanity unfolds as a film in 45 minutes from now and is a poetic offering of sorts of the arts for a cause. It is the collective coming together of the consciousness of brilliant, sensitive artists who believe in the larger good and unite to share their arts with the universe in the hope and faith that we, the viewers, will be, re will be responsible enough to acknowledge the offering with a donation. It is my privilege, really, to be in conversation with Akram Khan and Maven Koo. Maven is also a dear friend. And I've had the privilege of interviewing Akram Khan many years ago when he was in Chennai. Um, Trespassing Humanity is their project in collaboration with a host of other brilliant artists, Anushka Shankar, Nitin Soni, and our own very own TM Krishna. Um, I've also been big fans of uh, Akram Khan and uh, Maven Koo's work because honestly, I mean, I'm not reading their bio because they really need no introduction, because, but their work really sparkles for me with beauty, empathy, vulnerability, honesty, and the essence of all things that truly make us human. So thank you, Akram and Maven, yet again. And without much ado, after my rather long introduction, I'm going to dive straight in and ask one of you to firstly respond on the genesis of the idea and the title, because Trespassing Humanity is such a powerful title. Could uh, one of you just um, talk a little bit about that? Well, I think um, the credit really for me goes to Maven because I think TM Krishna, uh, the you know the genius singer, you know that we all love, uh, and friends, other artist friends reached out to Maven. And then Maven reached out to me, asked me, um, you know, what can we do? And really, it's 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 a it's a it's a bringing together um, on really two people's shoulders. One of them is Maven, and one of them is Celine. Mm -hmm. um, there is a divide between talking and doing. 
Maven and I are, have, we're very close, like siblings, like brothers, um, who are bound by not mothers or fathers, but who are bound by principles, by the way we see art. That's how we are bound together. And we share very similar experiences and yet very, very different experiences. But one thing we both agree on is that there is a difference between speaking and doing, the action of it. And there's a huge divide in our society, in the world today, in our civilization between doing, uh, speaking and doing. We may say something, but it doesn't mean we act upon it. So that's where really the title trespassing humanity, in a sense, we talk about humanity, but I feel we need to trespass our own humanity because we're afraid that if we give our humanity away, if we share our humanity or if we delve into humanity, perhaps we will be vulnerable. But it, my mother always told me that in vulnerability lies your greatest strength, one's greatest strength. Yes. What one thinks of as strength is it's the exact opposite that is strong. And I saw that between my mother and my father. My father was always an extrovert. My mother was an introvert. Yes. She was the artist and he was not the artist, but he was very aggressive, very strong headed, very patriarchal. Yes. And my mother was quiet, listening. You know, another word, if you re change the word listen, which is a, a pandemic in itself because we've lost the art of listening. Yeah. Absolutely. But if you change the, the configuration of the letters, it becomes silent. So really, listening happens when there is silence. But I think Maven should add more because really this is his baby and he, he really brought us, I mean, I invited Nitin and Anushka, but it was Maven who put the whole thing together, you know? Maven, would you like to? Yeah, I mean, Akila, I think, you know, in that period in May, particularly, I think, you know, it was just one thing after the other, wasn't it? And I remember there was a weekend where in, in one weekend, I knew 15 musicians who had lost someone, yeah. you know, and it was, it was just impossible for me to sit in this space of privilege that I sit in. I think that weekend also, I had an incident where I, I changed the date of my first vaccination about three times in order to suit my schedule. And I just thought to myself, my God, what a place of privilege to be in, to be able to do this. And, you know, I also, uh, I think being in the West, what has been interesting in the last year also has been that social inequality and social justice has become very prominent mm -hmm. with things like Black Lives Matter, et cetera. So this, this idea is very, uh, uh, very strong at the moment. But as Akram said, it's what are we doing? Right. What are we actually doing about it, right? Is it just going and protesting or are we actually doing something in the smallest of actions? And I think there was also something in me that felt a bit frustrated because we underestimate how much the world has taken from India consistently for, for centuries. Right. Imperialism right. is still very much evident mm -hmm. and the, from cu cu culturally to philosophically, the world makes trillions of dollars, right? From the commercialization of a yoga class to books on philosophy, to Indian music, to Indian dance, the list goes on, right? You just have to walk into any gym and you have a yoga class that starts with a Surya Namaskaram, a badly pronounced Loka Samastha at the end and an appropriated Namaste. And what are we doing to give back? Uh, because all we've given back to India really is uh, imperialist and colonialist ideas and McDonald's, right? So mm -hmm. I just felt very frustrated as well. And right. the one thing that I have learned uh, a lot working with Akram is how to perhaps uh, channel that frustration poetically instead of just shouting about it. So mm -hmm. it felt like I needed, we needed to do something and he was so generous and so open and it was, it has been challenging to present this. We had a lot of obstacles, but I always feel it's divine grace when obstacles stand before you, uh, because as we know, philosophically, it is working against the obstacles that allows for something beautiful to happen. So I think that is a good sign, <laughs> really. Right. Um, Maybe actually in, in, the, in the premise and the intent of, the, of trespassing humanity, um, there is a word that you uh, both use, the creative spine of India that you've drawn from, 
as artists and that has sort of uh, that you've gone on to nourish with your training and imagination and experience. Um, why is it crucial? I thought of that metaphor of the spine and I thought of why it is crucial for that spine and all the muscles and the nerves that surround it as well to be nourished. And if you were to apply that metaphor the, of the spine to um, to the arts, then there is a large ecosystem that is supporting the arts, the, the, the artists that are on the that marginalized artists that we completely choose to sort of not even like recognize. So I was thinking today of the spine and of the muscles and the nerves. And I feel like the spine is not going to be able to stand strong if we are going to uh, not look after it or not nourish it. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, the creative spine? That expression really, really caught my attention. So I'd like you to comment on that as well. Akram. Well, I think the spine, you know, I'm fascinated by the spine, actually, because many years ago, I've, I've shared the story with Akram. I, were, I, I, I heard an interview, a live interview with Chandraleka, where she, and Chandraleka always talked about the spine being the most, you know, the, the, the place of holding, uh, the place of anchoring. And she was being interviewed by, by a, a quite a well-known Western producer. And, you know, as it was a it was a particular time when when a lot of South Asians in the diaspora are kind of very uh, reverent to to any Western producer that came and kind of gave them opportunities. And Chandra sat in this interview and she turned around and she looked at him and she just went, "All of you are spineless, <laughs> right?" And because you know, particularly with her work, she had that grounding and that anchoring. And you know, Chandra Lekha particularly talked about uh, the necessity for that anchoring to be from the ground, right, from the ground. And I think it's so important for us to recognize that when we talk about artists, for example, and that's why what TM is doing is fantastic, is that, you know, Bharatanatyam did not start in Music Academy. Kathak didn't start in the Kamani Auditorium. The roots of it is from the villages the temples of those districts and the courts of those districts and, and the Gotipur villages outside of Bhubaneswar. And we forget as, as, the, uh, as the sophistication of performing arts yes. has taken over and theaters have become, you know, and touring artists, you know, we're not talking about touring artists here. We're talking about literally the, the man in the temple in a corner of Madurai who for generations has been going every morning and playing the Nadaswaram at four in the morning. Right. And no one thinks of him. And we have drawn so much from those traditions. What we do today on those main stages, the canon are from those co communities. And Maven, uh, I was going to just add that uh, yeah. uh, um, they're not always forgotten. Uh, sometimes they're edited and omitted out of yes. our history uh, intentionally by other artists. And that's that's a that's a really big thing you're saying about uh, the how we were inspired. If you go back generations, generations from, uh, and still inspired from those those artists who are marginalized yes. and who are forgotten. But they're not just forgotten; they are edited out of history. Yeah, right. Um, Maven Akram, would you like to you know talk of any uh, particular personal stories from your interactions, if any, that you've had with um, you know artists from you know, um, from marginalized communities? Like, do you have any stories that you could share that have sort of, you know, um, left a mark? And when you, especially when you were working on this project, did it sort of come back to you, if you have any? I mean, I think both of us uh, had a kind of a lot of conversations with people. Oh. I definitely had a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, when we talked about doing this project, I did want to speak to TM specifically because of the groundwork that he's been doing. And then, and also to really get a sense, because at that point, media was very, very uh, prominent in terms of coverage in urban cities. Right. right. So I really wanted to get a sense, a real sense from TM uh, in terms of what was happening, which he gave me. And then, of course, there were a lot of personal stories that kept coming my way. Uh, you know, I heard uh, I was sharing with Akram a very sad story of a, a particular uh, a, a musician, a temple musician who who lost his life and his two sons uh, uh, to COVID, leaving, of course, the wife and, and two daughters, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. also I at one point I'd heard about um, some problems that were happening in Orissa. We don't think of that as well. So there were lots of personal stories that were coming across um, and, and they were personal. And I think that's very important. They were really about 
personal lives and personal right. stories um, that that were really affected us actually. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was also thinking about how uh, for us, like urbanites, right, the pandemic perhaps gave us a mild uh, clue. I was thinking of what it is to be locked in. And we sort of negotiated our way and found our little voices through our digital devices. Um, it was, I felt, a small sample of how perhaps marginalized communities have felt forever, right? Um, boxed in, locked away, silent, um, voices never heard. What is your take on that metaphor of sort of being, uh, you know, locked in? Like, uh, I, I think one has to be careful with uh, uh, whose lens are we seeing? Uh, how, uh, whose lens are we uh, trying to understand what locked in or being isolated means? Um, uh, Maven, myself, and many others in the West and around the world are pretty much privileged to be isolated. People, some people don't, a lot of people don't have choices to be in locked in or isolated. Um, so when, you know, friends of mine or people that I know complain about, uh, even myself, I was complaining like, ah, oh, it's, you know, it's really horrible to be in isolation. And then, you know, somebody tells you a story and you, you, you suddenly have a perspective and context of what your version of isolation means and right. what it means for someone who cannot isolate, but needs to isolate. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and isolation is a very strange thing, I think, because it really, it, it really comes down to the reigning kind of eco economic system, mm -hmm. um, because the reigning economy, it's all designed around the economic system, isolation. So the reigning economic system was not only founded on isolation, it was also designed to produce isolation. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, very important thing that I read from a, a wonderful writer called Amitabh Ghosh. So, you know, in a sense, uh, the separation of the rich and the poor. It's not just an India problem or a Western problem, it's a global problem. And I think the biggest problem we have, one of the biggest, uh, which is re which has revealed itself through nature is the notion that we do not seem to understand that we are guests on earth. Mm. We're all guests. We do not own earth. We, like other species, are guests. And as guests, you always behave respectfully or hopefully respectfully when you're in somebody else's house. Absolutely. But we, when it's your own house, there is a, there is a shift of ownership. And so I think there is a, we have to really change the way we see isolation and the way we see also uh, our relationship to Earth. Right. No, that's such a, such a powerful uh, point, um, Akramji. Uh, Maven, would you like to add to that? I just wanted to add, I think there's something uh, so crucial here about this concept of privilege again. Uh, yeah, because I think we really don't realize that for me, for com really marginalized communities, even the assumption to complain is not there. Right. Yeah. Right. Because there's such a kind of sense of just accepting it because it's been predestined for so long. Yeah. You know, and, and when we break it down, I was talking to a doctor yesterday, actually, who was complaining about pe people he knew who were anti-vax, uh, vac uh, didn't believe in the vaccination. Right. And I was saying, when I'm talking about the communities that we're trying to support here, the idea to even be, have the privilege to say, I don't believe in vaccines is not mm -hmm. there. Doesn't even exist, yeah. It doesn't even exist. Absolutely. And so I think I think it's really important for us consistently to be aware of this privilege to question, this right. privilege to uh, to assume, right. uh, because I think in a lot of those communities they don't have that. And also very important that we don't assume our our privilege in in kind of ed considering how we need to educate them. Right. Because I think that is another form of you know. Uh, yeah. controlling again yeah absolutely um i want to ask you also a little bit about you know uh, would you believe obviously you do but uh, i'd like for you to reiterate you know the the ability of the arts to alleviate humanity and human suffering and uh, what is the role that the audiences can play here i want you know because i often notice that you know i think akram spoke about doing right we're often uh, uh, so many times we're watching stuff and just you know 
enjoying great works of art and moving forward. But I feel like it's important for us audiences to start doing, right? I want you to talk a little bit about, um, you know, um, what role and how can audiences participate in experiences like these to really sort of make a, you know, join hands with artists to really, you know, uh, make a significant change. I think it's important to say that it's, I feel strongly, I don't know how Maven feels, it'd be interesting to hear Maven. Um, for me, uh, it's not an artist's responsibility to um, to uh, carry the burden of the failures of politicians. Right. Mm. Mm. We cannot make the difference that politicians can. We can only um, suggest, mm -hmm. artists to suggest, mm. it is not to dictate. It, it is a way of proposing possibilities have you seen it through this lens have you seen it through another lens mm. that's it and yeah. the lens that you see is still very minimal it is from a very particular artistic lens. Uh, person's lens yeah, but it's the importance of maven and uh, so many artists in the world that those lens are observed because what's interesting about artists this is where artists play a big role mm. is that they see the world and how we belong in it uh, in a slightly different way to how politicians see the world. And the way politicians see the world is very vi visible. So it it is factual based. Mm -hmm. And the way artists see the world is invisible based. It is belief in the thing that you cannot see, but mm -hmm. you can feel. Beautiful, yeah. Maybe? Absolutely. I, I think I completely agree with Akram. And I, I, in fact, I was going to say something similar in that I think what the artist provides is the ability for, for an articulation that is consistently nuanced. Right. And that is not black and white. Right. Right. And I think that is the danger of the contemporary culture that we're coming in, in terms of this, this infringement of systems that are black and white so that things are fastly more quickly produced and it's just more clear for for systems to run but yeah. actually what we provide is the is the idea of possibilities right absolutely um i just want to you know ask you one uh, last question because um, we're almost close to 30 minutes so i want to ask you a little bit about um, uh, the artistic choices that you made in terms of what went into the film um, and also the process of collaborating with um, artists like Anushka, TM, Nitin. Could you just talk a little bit about, you know, what has gone into the film itself? So more people it's, actually, uh, you know, make a donation and uh, get the get the link to watch the film. I, I think, um, uh, Akila, it's very important. That's your name, Akila, right? That's right. That's so wonderful. I, I didn't know because Maven, we kept saying Akila and I was like, oh my God, th that's the very character we're working with in Jungle yeah. Book. Yeah, oh. so you're, so, uh, anyway, um, so uh, what's, what's, what's important to say about the film is that it, it's a very honest process. It's a very honest response. What I mean by that, it's not overproduced. It's done in the moment. Um, Maven and I uh, uh, thought of Anushka Shankar uh, and Nitin Soni, uh, we, we didn't know if they were free or busy. We would have loved to have more artists, but this was what was available in such a short time. And we both have a strong connection with Nitin and uh, Anushka, either in artistic capacity or just as a human capacity. Uh, TM Krishna was already on board because of Maven. Um, and so that relationship was very, very important. Um, but really it's not just the artists, it's the coming together of all the people around who put this together, Celine, the AKC staff, the, there were technicians, which was very moving. You know, they did it for free. There were technicians who came from other companies, ENB. Um, uh, there was a DOP that we worked with, who's a phenomenally famous DOP, director of photography. And he, we just worked, Megan and I just got to know him on a film that we just did um, with Asif, Asif Kabadi. And he came to support it. We reached out to him and he said, absolutely. I've got free days, I'm gonna come. Don't worry about the money. We'll do this. And all the uh, Maven can talk more like, you know, the cooking of I think Maven cooked, Celine cooked. Uh, it was just a coming together of people, really. Um, uh, and it was not about um, the artistic uh, 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 integrity was not the priority no. of how is this film going to look? 
Okay. That's that, because there's a certain ego about that. Absolutely. Uh, and really, it was about, Maven kept reminding us, it's about the coming together. It's about getting this out and making sure we can raise money. That's that's it. Raise money. That's what we need to do. Raise money. Forget about if I make a name or if I look bad in the work. It was about raising money so it can actually, that money can actually act. It can have a, it can have an effect on people's lives. Maven, please. Absolutely. I, and I just want to add that I think it's a film where I think you really, you will, because I've watched the, the film now, uh, it's, 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 an, it's an experience of kindness. Beautiful. That's what we really felt, the kindness of people coming together, many of whom had no relationship to India, actually, who came to help us. Absolutely. Yeah. And so there was such kindness in it. And just to finish off, about the letting go of ego at Akram said, which I always learned from him. It's always wonderful to be with him. I'll share this with the audience. You know, I've just got back into training recently, proper training, like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Right. My body is not where it needs to be. So, you know, with Bharatanatyam, of course, being bare body, I was like, oh my God, how my, my, you know, my body is not back. How am I going to camera boots on? All this kind of stuff. So I had very cleverly devised an idea of wearing a fresh garland flowers because I do something on Krishna and I read on Srimad Bhagavatam about this idea of the flowers. I was about to take the flowers and place it to cover myself basically mm -hmm. and I looked at Akram and I said oh shall I and he said absolutely not and then he said to me it's so important to trust the beauty of your body now and the honesty of what it is. Wow. So that confrontation of constant ego as well for all of us and to let go of it and to actually have an action in terms of doing it. Right. Absolutely. I mean, uh, there's so many beautiful words that I'm taking back from this conversation, but I think um, uh, we're striking among them is the, um, is the idea of empathy, of kindness, mm. uh, like Akram used, also vulnerability, right? What you just talked about, uh, Maven. And I think that if, uh, uh, you, and, and the importance of audiences to participate in this whole uh, experience. And like Akram rightly said, it is not the responsibility of an artist alone to be able to move and to make this happen. But it definitely like art opens up these possibilities for us to recognize the inequalities and see what we can do as responsible citizens to uh, contribute to that change. Thank you so much, um, Akram Khan and Maven Ku for um, uh, coming, um, accepting our invitation and uh, talking to us. I do hope we're going to be sharing a lot of uh, excerpts from the film as well. So more people go and donate and uh, watch this film. Um, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to add to sign off? No, just, 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 you know, as much support, uh, everyone. Uh, the more money we can raise, the better, really. But thank you, Akila, also for having Akram and myself. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Nana and my team, Nilabo and Suprita, who helped me. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, everyone who watched. Stay safe. The pandemic isn't over yet. And um, let's be responsible and um, try to do whatever best we can. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good evening, everyone. Good day.